not one case before the International Court of Justice, Liechtenstein wished to exercise its diplomatic protection rights against Guatemala and in favor of Notable. According to Liechtenstein, Guatemala breached its obligation under international law by arresting, expelling, and refusing to readmit Notable, and by seizing and retaining his property without compensation. This case is mostly known by the application of the principle of the real and effective nationality. The ICJ issued two judgments about this case, one for preliminary objections and the other considering its admissibility where it applied the said principle. But in the preliminary objection judgment, the court also considered two relevant questions. First, the scope of the competence competence principle and second, when the expiry of a declaration can deprive the court of its compulsory jurisdiction. It is important to have in mind that in the notable case, the jurisdiction of the court was based on the declarations accepting the compulsory jurisdiction by Guatemala and by Liechtenstein. On those type of cases, the court can be seized by an application filled by one of the parties. On this basis, on December 17, 1951, Liechtenstein filed an application instituting proceedings against Guatemala. However, according to Guatemala, its declaration had ceased to be in force. Therefore, the court had no jurisdiction to deal with this case. Guatemala's first preliminary objection was that the court can only see only settle disputes concerning jurisdiction in respect of Article 36, Paragraph 2 of its statute. As the expiry of the declaration accepting the compulsory jurisdiction is not in that provision, the court cannot decide about its own jurisdiction. However, the court concluded that since the Alabama case, general international law recognizes the principle that an international tribunal has the right to decide as to its own jurisdiction and has the power to interpret for, the, for this intention the instruments which govern that jurisdiction. The ICJ noted that this principle was expressly recognized on both Hague Conventions of 1899 and 1907, and the judicial character of the ICJ could, could only have the effect of strengthening this principle. Consequently, by this principle of general international law and by Article 36, Paragraph 6, the court is competent to adjudicate on its own jurisdiction. By the time the application was filed in the registry of the court on December 17, 1951, both the declarations were still in force. But Guatemala's second preliminary objection was that after January 26, 1952, its declaration had ceased to be in force. This was the first time that a government alleged that the expiry of a declaration involved the, re the removal from the court's list of all its cases, including those that were filed before the expiry of that period. When we are talking about the compulsory jurisdiction, the rules about the seizing of the court will emanate from the declarations. After examining the declaration of Guatemala, the ICJ concluded that it did not indicate that the time limit meant that with the expiry of the period, the court will not have a jurisdiction to deal with cases of which it has been previously seized. The court clarified that one thing is the seizing of the court, and another is the administration of justice. For the seizing, it is necessary to regard the rules established by the declarations, but once the court has been regularly seized, the administration of justice will follow the statute and the rules of the court. Unanimously, the court concluded that the expiry of the period or denunciation of a declaration cannot deprive the court of the jurisdiction already established. In the judgment of April 6, 1955, concerning the admissibility of the case, the main question that the court had to ascertain was whether the nationality conferred on Oldbom by Liechtenstein 
could be valid in as against Guatemala. Guatemala considered that Liechtenstein had failed to prove that Nordbom acquired Liechtenstein nationality in conformity with the principles of international law. According to Guatemala, Nordbom appears to have solicited Liechtenstein nationality fraudulently, with the sole object of acquiring the status of a neutral national before returning to Guatemala, and without any genuine intention to establish a durable link with Liechtenstein. To consider if the granting of nationality entails an obligation on the part of Guatemala to recognize its effects, the court does not need to consider the question of the validity of Nutbon's naturalization according to the law of Liechtenstein. As the court explained it, all sovereign states can define its own legislation relating to the acquisition of nationality. Indeed, most of the effects of nationality are produced within the legal system of the state conferring it. But the law relating to diplomatic protection is established by international law. According to the court, nationality is a legal bond having as its basis a social fact of attachment. It is the juridical expression of the fact that the individual is more closely connected with the population of the state conferring nationality than with that of any other state. That is why the principle of the real and effective nationality is a principle of general international law. This principle determines that the prevailing nationality should be the one based on stronger factual ties between the person and the state. The court considered that Nordbom's actual connect connections with Liechtenstein were extremely limited. Nordbom was German by birth. In 1905, he went to Guatemala and took up residence there, where he had business activities in the fields of commerce, banking and plantations. He also had business connections in Germany. On October 9, 1939, a little more than a month after the opening of the Second World War, Nussbaum went to Liechtenstein, residing there as a visitor with his brother, and, sub and submitted a Russian application for naturalization. On October 20, 1939, Nordbaum took the oath of allegiance and received a certificate of nationality. However, Nordbaum continued to have a fixed residence in Guatemala until 1943. On December 1, 1939, Nordbom had his Liechtenstein passport visited by the Consul of Guatemala in Zurich and returned to Guatemala at the beginning of 1940, where he resumed his business activities. So he went to Liechtenstein to apply for naturalization during a short visit to his brother, and as soon as he got it, he went back to Guatemala. Indeed, other members of his family have asserted Nordbom's desire to spend his old age in Guatemala. Therefore, the court, by 11 votes to 3, decided that the claim was inadmissible, as Guatemala is under no obligation to recognize a nationality granted in certain circumstances. The judge, uh, this judgment considered the case as a multiple nationality situation, and for that, it is often criticized. Nowadays, the commentaries to the draft articles on diplomatic protection determines that a state does not need to prove an effective or genuine link between itself and its national for the exercise of diplomatic protection. According to the Commission, the ICJ did not want to establish a general rule, but an exception. In conclusion, the Nordbom issue should be considered as a very peculiar case and a product of its time. Because while Guatemala had a strong link with Nordbom, Liechtenstein had almost no connection with him. Also, nowadays, migration is much more common than it used to be, and many, individual, and many individuals do not have the nationality of the country where they have an effective link.